Well, Mark, this is what's going on behind me. If you've traveled in and out of SeaTac, you've probably gone through the North Satellite. Even if you've come out here to pick people up or drop them off, you've been on the highway, you've been watching this construction underway. Now we can take you inside. It's a contrast of eras, and this is what's new for the 21st century. A terminal with vaulted ceilings, more windows, and more light. More restaurants and more space. And for the 20th century, more specifically the mid-1970s, the ceilings were lower, the windows fewer, there was less light. And a few of those old gates are still around. So you remember what the old North Satellite looked like? Yes, yes. Is this any better? <laughs> Unbelievable. I just hope that they just keep going and going and going. Uh, yeah. No, it's, this is awesome. Tom Stump is a longtime frequent flyer, and before retirement, he used to fly every two weeks to the state of Alaska. And Alaska was, and still is, his airline to get there. And up there, you can see another part of this. A mega lounge, nearly 16,000 square feet. Not just for the airline's best customers, but anybody with a first-class ticket or with the company's credit card, you can put down 25 bucks. And we really needed a flagship lounge that could house the growth over the next decades. Andrew Harrison is an executive with Alaska Airlines, and you'll hear that word a lot, growth. He's watching the growth at SeaTac, where Alaska is the airport's biggest tenant, but the growth of the airline itself, now the nation's fifth largest. Frequent flyers help keep the lights on. This is a step change in catching up to the demand and allowing there to be a bit more room and space uh, for guests to travel as they move out of SeaTac. So this has been a long time coming, but very, very necessary. So this is the outside of what we've been showing you, the expanded part of the North Satellite. And as we go over here, you can see they are already reworking, remodeling, and redoing the old North Satellite. And if you get far enough, you can see N9 and N8, two gates. That's what it used to look like. And when this is all finished in about two more years, what's old will be new again. A gain of eight more gates for an airport that in 2018 was still growing at a rate of more than 6%. Lance Little is chief executive for SeaTac. We're going to be in um, basically an expansion mode for decades to come. Now it costs more than $600 million for this expansion. Remember, the SeaTac is owned by the Port of Seattle. But they say no tax dollars went into this. All of this was paid for by the airlines, and Alaska paid for that expansion. And also, we are getting a new international arrivals facility at the other end of the airport that we've been showing you over the years. That is coming together. Some big changes coming there in terms of its move this fall. And also, you're seeing these buses driving around the ramps. Those are taking people out directly to flights, to airplanes parked on the airfield. Because there's not enough gates. This will help that a lot. Live at SeaTac Airport, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Glenn, before you go, do 